when you start running, you're very much focused on yourself. You're focused yes. on the activity of doing it. Like, yes. oh, how do I do this? Yes. What can I do? But how far can I go? How fast can I go? It's all about you yeah. and yourself and you're very center focused, which is totally cool. Yeah. But as you progress uh, in any endeavor and, and as you progress as a distance runner, your field vision starts to widen. And then suddenly you're, you're looking at how can I maybe help the people around me? Hello, family. Welcome to another episode of the Live Rum Bowlitz Show. I'm your host, Kenneth Pinkney. And today, guest, I like to say he's a true legend, a legendary in the ultra trail runner world. Not only he's a legendary ultra trail runner, but also he's a legendary photographer. And he's part of the team of the book Born to Run. Uh, the host of career at the Road, Road Dog Podcast. And all we do is run a uh, website. He also a race director. He probably does a couple a couple other stands here I probably don't know about. So family, let welcome meant to Luis Escobar to live on Ballet Show. So, so first, Luis, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here. I, and you're right. I do host a podcast. So this is a uh, this is backwards and unusual, and I kind of like it. So <laughs> yeah, so you can be on the other side of you no know, the table interviewing people. So you can now nah, you can interview. So well, is- let me ask you something. Hold on before we go any <laughs> further. Where are you? I don't know anything about you. I we're just meeting right here right now. Where are you physically? What part of the world are you in? Right now, I'm currently. Um, a lot of people know San Diego, so I'm San Diego, but but really in Ch- Chula Vista, you know, got San it. Diego County, Chula Vista, yeah. Got it, got it. So Southern California. Yes, yes. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a raised, but I got to represent South Carolina while I was born and raised. Ah, <laughs> South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, does, the, does the Appalachian Trail go through South Carolina? That's a great question. Great question. I mean, growing up as a kid, I never run the trails. So, <laughs> so probably do, but I know, I know North Carolina, I do, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, uh-huh. sure it's, for sure it's in North Carolina. I yeah, so that. maybe South, maybe, maybe in South Carolina, you know. You guys should know that, but. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> now I got to research that make sure. <laughs> well, let me ask you something else. So your podcast is Run, no, Live, Run, Boundless podcast. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's what's what do you talk about? Running, living. Yeah, of self. course it's about running, but life. You know, the journey, the process. You know, just how people got started. You know, the challenge, overcome obstacles in in life. You know, to become boundless. You know, and just uh, where it take. You know, to yes. Nice. So it's all about the journey. You know, I like. You know, so um, as I share my like my website. My, my journey and I, other people also. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So my podcast is called the Road Dog Podcast. Road Dog yeah. Podcast, and uh, same kind of thing, Kenneth. We we yeah. it, it's a running podcast, but we don't really talk about running. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes we do, but most of the time it's just interactions with yeah. people that are within the running community and the yeah. outdoor industry in general. So yeah. probably probably a similar format to what you have going on. Okay. Here. Yeah. You're probably much on a higher scale, though. You know. Oh, uh, I, oh, I want to learn from you. Okay, well let's <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's okay, <laughs> all righty. So, now everybody know you? You know, you catch my eye. You're for your you're for your being a photographer. You know all that. A lot of people know you for for that. You know, and also mm-hmm. due to the running and the book Born to Run. But tell us the family a little bit about your journey and the process of becoming a legend who you are today. Well, first of all, I don't consider myself a legend. However, I think when you get old and, you, you know, you start out living everyone around you, people start looking at you, oh, that guy's a legend. <laughs> no, uh, that guy's old. <laughs> so, <laughs> clear that up right now. So my, my journey as a photographer is really pretty organic. I, my parents are photographers and artists. Nice. I grew up in a small town. 
uh, on the California Central Coast, a little town called Atascadero, right mm -hmm. on Highway 101. Yeah. And my parents um, owned a portrait studio. They still do. Yeah. So I, the house that I grew up in was also my parents' my parents' business. Yeah. So uh, my dad would be out uh, out on the out in the yard photographing high school seniors or children or weddings or whatever it was, and my mom was. Uh, there in the back porch, uh, retouching negatives and ordering photos and framing pictures and all, everything that a small town photographer would do, my parents did. So I grew up in that environment yes. and um, it only made sense that I would uh, continue doing that type of work. You know, my dad took me to uh, uh, photography assignments when I was a kid. And so I was always around it, took photography in school, high school and junior college. Mm -hmm. And um continued on my own and I did the exact same type of thing that my parents did oh, nice but I did it a little bit further south down in the Santa Maria Valley so Santa Maria California yes and I had a portrait studio there since 1985 oh wow and, uh, yeah I've been serving the people there on the California Central Coast for for a long time yes yeah and okay. then at one point you know I running has always been important to me yes and at one point I just started uh, blending the two things, my uh, my knowledge and uh, passion for documenting things with my yes. camera, and then my my passion for distance running, and yes. kind of brought those two things together. And I started photographing runners. Okay. And then that just sort of opened up a whole yeah. big, big, big can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so you answered so much question already. Mm -hmm. the how you combining the running. The photograph, you know, pictures and stuff like that, and and you make it to like a beautiful thing, you know, and well, just, uh, like like all of you, the people that are listening, you're out on a on a run, in the trail, or in town, or wherever you're at, and, yes. and you, you might see something that's really beautiful and striking, yes. and you want to you want to document that, record yes. it, and share it with your friends. And of course, mm -hmm. now we have all sorts of social media, so you, know. you can take pictures and and share them with your friends, and yeah. um. That's what I was doing, you know, way yes. before social media, but yes, um, and, and doing it at a sort of like at the next level because yes. I wasn't just recording and sharing um, with my friends. I was documenting, recording mm -hmm. and sharing with, uh, you know, companies in the outdoor industry and yes. different publications. Yes. And uh, yeah, and that led to relationships with different races, race yeah. directors, yeah. different companies yeah. and uh, magazines. And I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm still yeah. still cranking away. But that's awesome. I mean, you, like like some people say, and I say sometimes you're doing what you love, you're loving what you do. You know, you can combine a photograph and run at the same time. And just, and when you photograph, you know, the picture that you take, you like you're telling a story of the people, you know, so. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're, when you see something, you're mm -hmm. not just seeing it, you're feeling it, you know, and I'm not talking about just myself, but all of us, when we're out there yeah. and you, you, you are involved in something that you love, you're out running on a trail, you're probably with your friends or with your dog or with your friends and your dog, you're in some beautiful, unusual place mm -hmm. and you're full of uh, emotion and then yes. you see something that's beautiful in your mind. Or, or scary or, or whatever yeah. the emotion is that it brings. And you want to, you want to document that you want to save yes. it, you yeah. want to share it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's super cool. And, and now that we have our, our phones in our pockets and <laughs> our, our running vests or, yeah. you know, we can, we can make beautiful imagery and it's, it's out yeah. there, you know, it's yeah, out there on all the people's websites and Instagram and all that stuff. Yes. That, 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 that's awesome. What you do it. And just also help bring some awareness. And um, you're part of the Born to Run team. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how, how was that experience like being part of that team, Born to Run? Well, so Born to Run that you're referring to is the book written, yeah, by, book, yeah. Yeah, written by Christopher McDougall. Yes. I believe that the book was, uh, was published in 2011, I think. 2011, okay. Maybe. I, I'm not, I don't recall. I should know this, but I don't. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, Kenneth, that was just a, another uh, uh, another time, another opportunity that my my camera yeah. and my running came together. Yes. So the book Born to Run, it's a lot of things, but it, it's a story of 
a group of distance runners, a group of American distance runners that were invited to Mexico yes. to run in the Copper Canyons, mm -hmm. along with the Tarahumara Indians that live yes. there in the Barranca. Mm -hmm. And we were invited there by a man named Micah True. Okay. In the book, they refer to Micah by his nickname, which is El Caballo Blanco. Yeah, yeah. So he, Micah True, decided to, he was living there in the Copper Canyons among these Tarahumara Indians, and he decided he wanted to help them, and the only way that he knew how to help them, uh, they were suffering because of uh, drought yes. and uh, issues with their crops, mm -hmm. and so he wanted to help them. And what yeah. he decided to do was to create a race, a okay. running event. And he invited the best runner in the world. And at that time, it was Scott Jurek, yes. living in Seattle, Washington. And, and in the canyon, there was a very famous runner there. His name was Ornolfo Kimari. Okay. Ornolfo is a, is a traditional Tarahumara Indian. So Micah's idea was to bring Scott Jurek and, and Ornolfo together for a 50-mile race in the Copper Canyon. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you all of that to tell you how I got involved. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. So, so Scott agreed to go to Mexico and run with these Tarahumara Indians. And Christopher McDougall was also going on this trip. He was going to be writing an article for Men's Health magazine. Yes. And it just happened that they were looking for a photographer, mm -hmm. a photographer that could run. And... Scott and I had done some other projects together. And so he suggested to McDougal that they reach out to me, see if I was available. To okay. go. And um, this was in, in 2005. Mm -hmm. And so we all connected and it, it turned out that I was able to take advantage of this opportunity and nice. get myself on that trip. Mm -hmm. And I did. And in, in February of 2006, we traveled there and and then we ran in this race, this 50 mile okay. race that Micah True had created. It was the Copper Canyon Ultra Marathon. Yes. And uh, just like I was describing before, all of these beautiful things are happening and I have my cameras and I'm documenting all of this. Yes. And the imagery from that trip became very special and yes. iconic and published yes. all over the world. Yes. And one of those images is on the cover of the book Born to Run. Nice. But, 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 there's a lot more imagery from that trip that's out there in the world. So if you're listening to this, if you just Google right now, Tarahumara, yeah. Copper Canyon, uh, Scott Jurek, any, any of those phrases, the images that I'm talking about will, will come up in, in a Google search. Okay. So that's how I got there. And that trip in 2006 yeah. and those photographs uh, changed my life okay. and have impacted me in a positive and permanent way. I can imagine. I, I mean, yeah, I, I saw that you you built a pretty good, I guess, you built some pretty good relationship with the people uh, out there. Huh? Yeah, that relationship continues. You know, I've been down there um, a few times. Okay. I was just in the Copper Canyons in October uh, okay. of last year. Yes. And I was there as a race director. I was there helping a friend of mine conduct a race there. Okay. His name is Michael Miller. Yes. And he has, a, he has an event there called the Copper Canyons Endurance Runs. Nice. And he hosts a, a hundred miler, a marathon, a half marathon, and a 10K. Right. Wait a minute. I said that wrong. There is no 10K. We're going to add a 10K. Uh, a hundred, a, a marathon, and a half marathon. Okay. And it's in, uh, it's in the heart of the, of the Copper Canyons. And, um, it's an event that you can go to. Anybody's, everybody is welcome. You can okay. find it on Ultra Sign Up. You go to ultrasignup.com mm -hmm. and you'll find the Copper Canyon Endurance Runs. Or you go to my website, which is yeah. all we do is run .com. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for you to go and experience yeah. uh, several days in the heart of the Copper Canyons, running right alongside traditional Tarahumara Indians. Nice. Not something that... Uh, it, 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 it's a rare opportunity, and Michael Miller makes it makes it happen. Yeah. So anyway, I, 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 yes, I have established a relationship That's with, with a lot of folks there, and it's a very important place to me. Yeah, I, I continue to go down there as often as I can. Yeah, and also with that uh, Tara uh, Tara Mara runners, uh -huh. I hope I'm saying the name right. Uh huh. <laughs> um, I have watched uh, uh, Infinite Race. Uh, that was the 30-30 episode. 
mm -hmm. that detail of the term on our, on our, on our runners. Um, I, I, I heard your, your interview you done recently, not or maybe last year. He wasn't actually there, but you but you know about it, you know. And and what yeah, what you learn from the people, you know, and the culture being over there. Well, that documentary that you're talking about, yeah. it was created by ESPN. Yes. Part of the 30 for 30 series. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, produced and directed by a very prominent, famous producer director from New York City. Okay. And that story, that documentary, it was deep. It it it, it oh, yes, touched, it was. It, it touched on a lot of subjects. Yes. And I was honored to be part of it. Okay. They came to to, to visit me. Okay. At my home in Cool California, and we yeah. uh, sat in my home and. And we looked at photographs from the 2006 yeah. trip. Uh, I talked about those images, and you can see that in that 30 for 30 documentary yes. called "The Infinite Race." Yeah. It talked that particular um, film talked a lot about a, a race that happened there yes. that went badly. Um, there was some violence mm -hmm. uh, during the race that mm -hmm. that led to the cancellation of the race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and it and all the fallout that surrounded that yes. violence um there was some what's the right word some uh conflict between mm. rival uh i don't know what the right term is Pride. cartels, yeah. cartels. Yep. cartels. yep mm. and so there was some uh, conflict between these folks and it spilled over into the race mm. And so th that documentary talks about that. Yes. It talks about cultural appropriation and mm -hmm. the issues with, you know, foreign people going into the Copper Canyons mm -hmm. and uh, the, the idea of appropriation and possibly exploitation. Yeah. And so it, it dives deep into that. Yes. And uh, it's a very powerful and beautiful and necessary uh, documentary. So I would really suggest that you check it out. It's called The Infinite Race. Yeah, it definitely was good. I gotta, I gotta see it again too. And just, uh, that's all one time, but I wanna see it again, just really take in some more. So uh, do you, we have a pair for that. There was, uh, uh, there was a pair for something like that to happen. That's something normal for that to happen over there. You know? Were they prepared for violence? The violence, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know that there's a way to prepare oh, yeah, for pure, but like that, but are they aware? Aware, yeah, aware, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, Kenneth, I travel a lot, not just to Mexico. I, I travel yeah. all over, yeah. all over the world. And, you know, the, things can happen anywhere at yeah. any time. And so mm -hmm. if you are a responsible traveler, if you're a responsible yeah. event coordinator, of course, you're aware of things that can happen. Yes. Um, and you can prepare to a point. Mm -hmm. But this particular thing that happened at this event, they, they, there was no, um, they couldn't foresee it happening. Mm -hmm. And so it was a bad thing. And yeah. it happened. And mm -hmm. the, the folks that were coordinating that event, I think, made all the right decisions. Okay. And what they did is they canceled the event and and they evacuated because it yeah. was dangerous to be there. Yeah. And so yeah. that's that's what happened. I think that that was the obviously the right choice because yeah. nobody else was was hurt or injured and they got out of there safely. Yeah. And so your listeners are like, "Wow, man, I don't want to go to Mexico because it sounds super dangerous." <laughs> like I said before, yeah. everywhere in the world that I've traveled, yeah. you know, if you're looking for trouble, if you're behaving poorly, mm -hmm. um, you will find trouble. Yes. And it's true everywhere in the world. It's true here in the state of California, where we yes. live. Um, I have traveled in and out of Mexico and Central America and South America, and uh, I feel safe. And yeah. I, I would not discourage anybody from yeah. traveling into Mexico and into the Copper Canyons. But I yeah. would also say that you keep your eyes open yes mm -hmm. or keep your head on a swivel <laughs> keep your head on a swivel and, and uh yeah. if you don't want trouble don't look for it <laughs> yeah definitely definitely <laughs> uh, uh, to take it to a more personal level 
what does it mean for you to do what you do as a photographer and a runner? What does it mean for me? Well, yeah. and there's something else too. It's not just my photography. It's not just my personal running. Yeah. But, but I host running events. Yes. Right, all yeah. over the country and beyond. I'm yeah. responsible for about 17 races. Wow. Trail runs. And all of those things, even though they, they, it doesn't seem like it, but all of those things are all kind of kind of the same. And it's, mm -hmm. it's I look at everything I do, Kenneth, and this might sound corny, but <laughs> it's all in an effort to create opportunities for other people. Yes. So I believe that my photography uh, is sharing stories yeah. out on the trails and yeah. it's helping race directors and outdoor industry companies it's helping them tell their story yes and that i believe sincerely creates opportunities for people that want to come out yes. and run that's awesome yeah. my personal running i don't know how that doesn't impact anybody that's my own thing i just set my own goals and get out there and run yeah. as much and as well as i possibly can yeah. but the yeah. events that i organize i honestly believe that i'm doing it um to share some of the experiences that I've had. I'm almost 60 years old. I started yeah. running seriously in the in the early in the early 1980s. Okay. And I've had so many great things yeah. happen and I've met so many awesome people and traveled yeah. to incredible places. And if I can share some of that with people yeah. through creating events, then that's what I want to do. Uh, that's lovely. That's lovely. You know, just um and not by you, but just by other people. You know, you do what you do to, to serve others. You know? yeah. Well, this is what I think, and, yeah. and it, this applies to everything. But let's 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 uh, apply it to, towards running. When we start, when you start running, you're very much focused on yourself. You're focused yes. on the activity of doing it. Like, yes. how, how do I do this? Yes. Um, what can I do? But how far can I go? How fast can I go? It's all about you. Yeah. And and you're very center focused, which is totally cool. Yeah. But as you progress uh, in any endeavor, and, and as you progress as a distance runner, your field vision starts to widen. And then suddenly you're, you're looking at how can I maybe help the people around me? Yes. You know, there's something that I can do and use my, my passion for running to help the folks around me. And then that can bro broaden even more. And then you start thinking about well, what about the places that we run? How can, is there something that I can do to help preserve the, the and encourage more places to run? Uh, more, is there something I can do to help create more open space, more uh, multi-use recreational trail systems? Yeah. And you start getting broader and broader and broader. Yes. And then start, you know, it, it never ends. You, yes. you go from thinking fully about yourself to yes. the expanding out to other people and to your community and beyond. And that sounds corny. No, no. That's what I do. That's what I think. And that's how I live. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, because I got started maybe like what, nine, eight years ago when I'm running, I'd done it because I, I feel my Navy way in that time. I started many times. I thought I'd come feel my Navy way in. And I'm trying to like no lose the way again in shape. It started with that. And in the process, the journey took me to really share my story and started doing, doing this social media stuff and sharing other people's story and things like that, you know, and just, um, and, and then trying to be, to be about the community, you know? Well, I, I, I see that we're only meeting right now, but it's obvious that that's, this is you, this is the same, you and I are on a very similar path, very similar journey. Um, it sounds like you started at the beginning because you wanted to get in shape. Yeah. Uh, losing weight or whatever the process was. Yeah. And um, then you start expanding your view yeah. it becomes wider and wider. Now you're hosting a podcast and you're, you know, you're creating a platform for your guests to share their stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, I really enjoy doing it also. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. It's a powerful thing. Like, yes. Good for you. Well, along our journey, we had like obstacles so challenges along the way. What will probably be your greatest or one of your one of your greatest obstacles to overcome so far in your journey, your career? Hmm. Probably the greatest obstacle that I have 
had that I have had as uh, moving forward is lack of education. Mm. I started very, very young. Yeah. Um, I, my wife and I had children very, very young. Okay. I went, I went to work immediately. Like I said, I grew up in a photography studio. I did have some photography education, but that was about it. And so, um, that's a problem, you know, that I, I, I did not take advantage of the educational opportunities that might have been available to me. Yes. I was occupied with other things and that, that was a problem. Um, I, you know, should probably share the same obstacle that, that all busy people do. There's just not yes. enough time. Mm -hmm. There's not enough time in the day, uh, in the week, and there's not enough time in our lives yes. to accomplish everything that we would like to accomplish. So, you know, education and time management, those are two things that uh, maybe I haven't worked to my full potential because of those things. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's definitely, uh, like tell, going to your podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah you interview a lot of people, mm -hmm. met a lot of people. So, Tell something like the, some of the people you interview, something like I know what are like your favorite interviews or whatever. Do you have yeah. one that stuck out to you? A couple. Well, let me tell you this. So the Road Dog podcast, yeah, it's uh, almost two years old. We today published <laughs> published episode ninety two or ninety three today. Oh, nice. So we've published an episode every single Monday. Okay. For ninety two weeks. Nice. And it started honestly. Uh, because of COVID, yes. because of the pandemic, yes. because when that happened, I suddenly realized that everything that I do depends on large groups of people yes. getting together. And then suddenly that was over. Mm -hmm. So I, I panicked and I was afraid that I was going to lose contact yes. with my community and my audience and yes. my customers. Yes. And so I thought, I'm going to create a podcast. Okay. And so I did. And I, I, the, the first thing I did, the smartest thing I've ever done, uh, Kenneth is I hired a producer. His name is Kevin Lyons. So Kevin and I are a team. The road right. dog podcast is our podcast. It's not just mine. It's okay. Kevin and I. Now Kevin's in behind the scenes, but he's the one that really makes the show right. sound great. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. So he's very, very good. Yeah. So, uh, at the beginning, I thought that I would create a, a podcast and it would, would last a couple of months until yes. this COVID was over. Yes. And, um, you know, COVID's not over. It doesn't look like it's going to be over anytime soon. <laughs> so we just kept going. I, I believe that the very first guest yes. that we had on the show was Dean Carnassus. Nice. And so I contacted him and he's at the time we were working on some other projects together. Right. So it yes. wasn't too much of a stretch to ask him. And he, he agreed. And okay. I believe that he's episode number one. Oh, okay. And then I, I started listening to some running podcasts and it seems like the, there, there's a lot that are very similar. Like everybody yeah. wants to talk to Courtney. Everybody wants to talk to <laughs> Jim Wamsley. Everybody wants to talk to Camille Heron. Yeah. So the, 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 all those shows, they're not the same. They're, they're all very different and they have their own qualities, but yeah. they're, they're, they're kind of the same. Yeah. I thought I, I'm going to do a running podcast. That's not about running. Okay. I'm just going to talk to runners, and if yeah. running comes up, we'll talk about it. But mostly, yeah. we're just going to, we're just going to. I'm hoping that the Road Dog Podcast feels like yeah. we're sitting on the tailgate of a truck having a beer after a run, yeah. and we're just yeah. talking about whatever we're talking about. Okay. Some of my favorite interviews yeah. are not necessarily famous people, and I have interviewed plenty of famous people. Yeah. <laughs> um. I like to talk with uh, with just about anybody. One of my favorites is with my friend John Vanderpot, who's from San Diego. Mm -hmm. Vanderpot is an English teacher, and he is an accomplished distance runner. He's not fast. He's not the back of the pack. He's not even the middle of the pack. He's kind of towards the back of the pack. <laughs> he's just a guy that's run a lot of races all over the country, and he just has a lot of uh, awesome stories and conversations. So we mm -hmm. talked about his running. We talked about his wrestling. We okay. talked about his career as a teacher and his passion as a chess player. <laughs> My dog's walking in and she's panting. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> bring her in, bring her in, bring her in. <laughs> she's walking by. 
Uh, another episode is that uh, that's a standout in my mind is with um, with a guy named Max Krakoff. Okay. Uh, and Max is a hobo. He is an actual train riding, train hopping hobo. <coughs> Rides trains all across the country, back and forth. He's been riding for over twenty years. Wow. And he's a distance runner. So he'll hop on a train and go to the Leadville Trail 100 on a train and then jump off and run that race and then go jump on another freight train and head off to his next destination. I like it. So that was a great one. So, yeah, Max, Crack Off, uh, and then John Vanderpot. Those are two good ones. Okay. The good one is with uh, – this guy is a famous one. His name hmm. – um, oh, my gosh. Oh, Billy Mills. Okay. Billy Mills – is a um he's a native american indian from north dakota i believe yeah. north dakota or maybe south dakota he is a lakota indian and he is the 1960 summer olympic gold medalist in the 10,000 meter oh. run so he ran in tokyo japan yeah. in 1960 and he won the gold medal Oh. And I had this opportunity to sit down with him yeah. in the basement of the, uh, oh, what the heck is the name of that hotel? It's a famous hotel yeah. in uh, Colorado where The Shining. Yeah. Uh, the Shining. Yeah. Oh, heck, I forgot the name of the damn hotel. Anyway, the Stanley, <laughs> the Stanley Hotel. So I was at an event and Billy yeah. Mills was there. Yeah. And... I asked him if he'd be on a podcast and he said, sure. We went down <laughs> to the basement and we talked for an hour. So nice. those are three great episodes. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's great. I love it. You know, um, right. A fame and all fame is just all about just have a great conversation sometime, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's, 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 that's definitely. Um, and speaking of different podcasts, well, I know you uh, saw another interview, maybe the same interview, I know you do a lot do some work with like nonprofit homeless with um uh, Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're asking me if I've done work with homeless? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's very important to me. Um, oh, yes. I used to live in downtown Santa Maria, California, right okay. in the heart of town on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, people from the Central Coast will will know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um I lived on the corner of Broadway and Morrison, downtown yes. Santa Maria. And it's a beautiful city okay. filled with wonderful people. Yeah. But like most medium to large size cities, there's a, a, a homeless yes. epidemic, right? There's just yes. Disadvantaged people all over the place. Yes. And there's a lot of uh, mental illness and drug abuse and addiction yes. and all that stuff. So I used to wake up in the morning and there'd be homeless folks in my yard or on the front deck or on oh, the front wow. porch. And so I was just always something very, very interesting to me and concerning to me. And I, I, I was at an event in New York City and I met uh, a guy named um, Terrence Gershberg. And mm -hmm. at the time, Terrence was uh, the executive director of a, a, of a nonprofit in New York City called Back on My Feet. Yes. Back on My Feet is an organization. I think they have 12 or 15 chapters across the country. Okay. It's an organization, and their slogan is that they combat homelessness mm -hmm. through the power of running. Nice. I like that. So essentially what it is, it's a running club for homeless people. That's great. And there's people that coach. Yeah. Uh, and these homeless folks are invited to come. Mm -hmm. They meet three days a week, I believe, 5 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They run what they can, and this organization helps them, and they just use running as the vehicle to help these people. Yes. And my interaction with those folks led me to the New York City Marathon. Oh, nice. Uh, I forget what year it was, probably 19, maybe 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, I was invited to go there and run the New York City Marathon with a homeless person. I paced a guy. Awesome. That was homeless. His name was Dale. Dale and I ran the entire New York City Marathon side by side. Wow. And uh, he ran a 402, I think, something like that. Pretty good. And uh, it was a great experience for him and for me. I can't so imagine. That organization is called Back on My Feet. So backonmyfeet.org, O-R-G, backonmyfeet.org. Okay. That, that's great because um, my current job, I work at PATH San Diego. 
mm-hmm. um, people since the homeless. You know, I work with what works. I work work with the veterans, the homeless. You know, with uh, employment. You know, and if that's great, if I could take what I do or rent it and and, and help out the, the the homeless here in, in San, San Diego, also. You know, and well, so you know that running with the with a group of friends is powerful right so your buddies yes. are waiting for you so you're going to get up yes. and you're going to go meet them yes. so it creates some accountability on on your part you want to go there you want to support your friends they're going to support you yeah. and it's uh it's something that's stable and constant and yeah. so i i think that concept can be helpful to some people yes so, yeah, not yeah. Almost people not everybody yeah. is not going to resonate with everybody Understand. there are some folks out there that um are receptive to the idea and i've seen the success yeah it works yeah definitely you know so that that's great well i saw that you no know, so being interviewed before that you bring the bar that up like i like it that still got to me you know in ways you know i could too you know do that either with my job i work at with pal you know and just knew that or uh, so something, something like that you know so that, well, I'll, I'll tell you what i i don't know the answer i i drive up and down this state and i it, and i see the homeless people yeah. everywhere yes and uh i i do not know the answer I, I i see the problem yes and i and i think what we're seeing these folks on the streets i don't know that they are the problem or they are the um yeah. the result of a larger problem right they're, yes they're, yeah they're the symptom of something bigger and i don't know the answer but i know that running can help some people and yeah yeah if you can help some people then you, it's a start it's as long as you have somebody and along that one person like like your friend daryl dale you know it just a you know what i would be the homeless among us you know whatever we could do to help out you know we are you know, we, are, we are called to serve you know that sure. yeah so, so so definitely yeah and it was our platform in a way that we could help help out people, which is uh, uh, how, what you're doing. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and so leading to the last couple of questions. Um, and all the things you have done in the place you have been and people you've met around the world, what have brought you the greatest joy so far? Well, it's, it's all the same. Like I said earlier, what brings me the greatest joy, and, and, and again, this sounds contrived but it's just creating opportunities for other people oh, yeah there's yeah. so much satisfaction when you organize an event yeah. and you put a lot of time and effort into it yeah. and and then the people come yeah and then you watch them yeah. on the course that you designed and the race that you built yeah. and you see people meeting their goals or exceeding yeah. their goals it feels yeah. pretty damn good yes so yes. that's the greatest joy um i'll tell you uh, some of the more exciting places that i've been recently very recently uh, in october i was in atlanta georgia i put on a 10k race there for spartan my friends at spartan okay yeah from there i went directly to mexico to the copper canyons and helped conduct that race that i was telling you about and then from there i went to abu dhabi which is in the United Arab Emirates in the, you know, um, Arabia. We're Perfect. right on, on the, um, the Gulf of, uh, Gulf of, what, what Gulf was it? Now I'm forgetting. <laughs> the Persian Gulf. I'm sorry. We were right on the Persian Gulf. So that was very exciting to be in a completely foreign country, Imagine. literally on the other side of the planet. And I was there to put on a half marathon in oh, the nice. day this place called the empty quarter in abu dhabi and uh yeah man that was pretty wild yeah Imagine. wow I, I just got back from that um about three or four weeks ago it's been about a month now since i've been home okay that, that, that's that's awesome man. that's beautiful how you no know, right in you know man being a photographer it opened up so many doors for you to ever do what you do you know and it's so uh, well, what I would say to your listeners, um, yeah, man, I, I got it. I got a lot of good things going on. I'm very, very fortunate. I have an yeah. awesome life. I'm doing exactly what I want to do every day. I'm waking up and I'm doing what I want to do. I, there's never a time when I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go to work. It's, it's, it's the opposite. It's like, oh, shit, I, I get to go to work. 
<laughs> happy, happy doing what I what I do. Mm. And uh, I am here because of opportunities that were given to me. Yes. By um, being aware of those opportunities. Yeah. If you're listening to this, I mean, if, if I could give you any advice, just keep your eyes open and be prepared, you know, prepare yourself for opportunity because it's going to come. And when it comes, you need to take full advantage of it. Don't be afraid. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Be prepared for opportunities. So be, be aware prepared. and not being afraid. Okay. Don't be afraid. Uh, Kent, you have one lap. <laughs> you have one lap, man. So, you know, make the best out of that thing. I don't know. I do my best. I do my best to do that. You know, I do my best to do I that. Yeah, so, so, so definitely. Um, and my, my last question to ask everybody. What is your boundless motivation and thoughts? I think everything that we were just discussing, my boundless motivation is the fact that I, I feel like I'm running out of time. I want to do everything that I can to improve my situation, to improve you know, my family and my community, and to do things for other people. That's what motivates me, creating awesome opportunities for the folks around me. Okay. And a, and a nice, you know, make our, create an opportunity, create an opportunity, you know, you provide a, cause you was provided with opportunity to do what you do. And I just try to you know, pass on that same thing. Opportunity. I, I, I say that phrase so much yeah. almost every day that it's just sounds repetitive, but it's something yeah. that it's true. It's something I believe in. And so you'd yeah. ask me about the Copper Canyon and the book born yeah. to run all that stuff. Micah true that man yeah. in 2006 in Mexico, yeah. I was sitting down with him yeah. and we're having a couple of beers and eating a bowl of beans and just talking. Yeah. And I was, you know, commending him for building this race and doing this thing. And yeah. He told me that the greatest thing, the greatest gift that we have to share with one another yeah. is the gift of opportunity. Give, some, give somebody a chance. Yes. That's it. He told me that in 2006, in February, yeah. and we're recording this yeah. in January of 2022. And I still think about him, yeah. and that phrase, every single day, and that's how I live. That's awesome. I love it, you know, because I think back on life, you know, opportunity that began to me. You know, the, the places I live at, you know, mistakes along the way, but you know, I got plenty of chances, opportunity to do over again to, to do better and just uh, allow me to do what I do right now. And just uh, hopefully now I'm able to get other people opportunity, you know, be, be helped to somebody else, you know, people it's, help me out. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just sharing and you don't have to have a bunch of money or yeah. a bunch of experiences or yeah. a bunch of anything, yeah. whatever you have, however modest it might be, or however great it might be, yeah. share a little bit yes. with somebody and watch what happens. Yeah. Yeah. The Tarahumara have a term for this. It's called Korima. Korima means to share. They, those folks down there, they have nothing and yeah. they have everything. Wow. And they don't really possess things like we do. No. Whatever they have, it belongs to them and it belongs to anyone else that might need it. That's awesome. So they, th that's how they live. Yeah. I don't know. Some people listening up to this might think, oh, that's not a good way to live. <laughs> but, but, but that's how they live. And yeah. you know, whether we like it or not, that's how they live. Yeah. And yeah. I see it and I try to incorporate some of that into my world. Yeah, definitely. You know, if we all do the same, they could probably be a much better world, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. So, to thank you for that. It was so, great. Let me ask you a couple questions because <laughs> we haven't met. Okay. So, how and why did you think to reach out to me? Where did you find me? Oh, man, if you know. I like because since I started my, my social media thing, you know, I be on Instagram for social media. Uh, you know, I saw some some work you do maybe on or on a magazine 
or I would like go on Instagram. I saw you and I saw your pictures and stuff like that and, and, and running. And uh, so I like, um, my own hair, I hear my hair about my hair about you somewhere also. I said, I want to just, I want to just pull myself out and reach out to you and see what I'm doing and just reach out to you, you know? Great. Yeah, just, yeah. In your, I don't know how many episodes you've recorded, but yeah. have you reached out? Have you ever been nervous to reach out to somebody like, oh man, this guy, this, this, this person's not going to want to talk with me? Oh, it, yeah, quite a few people. Yeah. You know, I mean, the yeah, best, the big you know, people who's well known in, in, in the running world. Um, I kind of have, yeah. You, has any has anyone ever said no? Not really, no. But <laughs> but <laughs> so 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 it's it's, it's, it's some way it did, so maybe some have responded. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what I, that's what's happened to me. Like, there's rare. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever just said, like, no, I'm not coming on that show. <laughs> But they like politely don't respond, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of fade away. But with, with that, my challenge to you would be just keep on doing it, you know, reach yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't hesitate to reach out to anybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. My awesome gratitude for some of the people that have said yes, who I surprised the people I interviewed, you know, some of the people who, who have said yes, you know. Or even some people who have like supported me in doing this, some well-known people, some people you, you you met you know who you who you know you know who who's supporting me you know and do what you, I'm doing. Do you have a particular uh, guest that you're really proud of that you were able to get on the show? I think uh, Sal Sally McRae. Ma Ma um, oh yeah. And I interviewed her two time actually. She loved me so <laughs> her allowed me to interview her two time. You know because when I first started this, you know I kind of like I don't know I'm being vulnerable right now with myself. I'm not from the country. I talk fast, you know, sometimes, like, you know, or why wasn't people want to, you know, I'm gratitude for people I know that will allow me to interview them or tell the story. Mm -hmm. And that's why I first thought, before I thought an interview, I do a website and I ask me to share the story. Even people I know, now I was in gratitude for them allowing me to share the story, and, you know. And when I thought with an interview and doing like the YouTube and stuff like the podcast, we're just the gratitude of people who allow me to interview them, you know. And, and like like I said, I just still got because she let me interview her two times, you know. And so um, <laughs> that's super cool. She's a big deal. So that's a yeah. that's a that's a great one to have on. Yeah, and she, she she down to earth, you know. She she I mean she's a big deal, but she really you know down to earth. She really you know that deal with people. And you know, so I just 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 for gratitude, you know. You know, even even, even Dean, you know, and even you know, you know Dean uh, Dean Carnaxis, you know, and just have have him, you know. So yeah. Uh, uh, that's another true legend, you know. Yeah, they come by the people, you know. So, but yeah, it just um, gratitude, you know. Uh, well, as you know, most distance runners are pretty cool, and if they have the time, they're going to give you the time. Yeah, and yeah. it seems to me people might object to this, but I think the longer the distance, the nicer the people. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's funny. I believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, something I appreciate it. So I'm going to keep it going, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoy doing that. I really enjoy the connection, you know. I, I get nervous, you know, every time I start interviewing people, you know, but just uh, the more I get to the conversation, you know, I just let, let it go. <laughs> do, you, do you have a method for your listeners to support your show? Like, do you ever ask for financial support from listeners or corporate? Um, hey, man, should I tell, I tell right now? Uh, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I do seek out, like, you know, a sponsorship, you know? Yeah, so I do have, now my, I got to just send down a shout out to um salt stick you know um and just you know reach out to them how this put a take a chance on me you know and, and to, to to sponsor me and support me i'm um just gratitude you know because sometimes I look at me you know <laughs> doing it you know who who am i you know i know i don't have like you know a lot of followers or nothing like that you know it's not huge but just them um, taking a chance you know on me you know and also, um, 
Uh, Maggie, Maggie Tron from Tailwind, you know, just shut down the shout out to her <laughs> before for supporting me, you know. Well, those are two fine people right there. I uh, I believe it's Jonathan Toker is with uh, Salt Stick. And well, as I talked to Noah, he's named Noah, I talked to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's awesome that they see value in what you're doing and they're supporting yeah. you. Uh, but, but do you have a, a, a method for your listeners to oh. financial support? No, I, I don't. Mm. No, I don't. That's something, I guess something we could talk more about. <laughs> or, yeah. Well, you, you might be surprised that some of the folks listening um, might see value in, in helping you and supporting you, even if it's just very, very small. Yeah. You know, one, we, I had a guy on the show one time and, and um, he told, he, he was, we had the same conversation. He's like, do you have folks that have support your show? I'm like, no, not really. He goes, people will, you know. Yeah. Uh, he said, think of it this way. If you're listening to this, yeah. you're a friend of Kenneth's, and if you saw him in Starbucks one morning, would you say, hey, buy him a cup of coffee and sit down and talk with him for a few minutes? Yeah, probably, you know, you do that. And that might, might cost you four or five dollars. Mm -hmm. Think of this like that. It's like yeah. buying your buddy a cup of coffee, okay. hanging out with him for a little while. Yeah. You see him once a month, yeah, you buy him a coffee once a month. Yeah. So, you know, that could be incorporated into your show mm -hmm. to get to get your friends and listeners to uh, offer you some support. I bet that people are, would be willing to do it that are listening right now. Huh. Okay. That's uh... – yeah, that, that's something. Yeah, that's something. I guess to think about you know and, and, and how to do that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's something we could talk. Maybe we could talk some more, more about. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah, again, thank you. It was great, and I really enjoyed this on this conversation. I hope we get to see each other in person. You know, in, in the future, near future. Um, you can't come to a yeah, come make a trip to San Diego, <laughs> or or maybe go to try do one of your races. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see you. Yeah, anytime you go to all we do is run.com and see a schedule and uh, mm -hmm. pick something out. We host this thing called the Born to Run Ultra Marathon. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's happening uh, April 16th, 2022. That's in Los Olivos, California. Okay, and it's a um, interesting. Uh, event it's it's like a festival multi-day yeah. we have a 10 mile 30 mile 60 mile yeah. a 100 mile that starts on friday nice. uh, and then we have a four-day race that starts on wednesday okay people are on this private ranch uh for four days and they run as much or as little as they like in that period of time nice. that starts on wednesday and then the hundreds on friday and then the 10 30 and 60 start on saturday Okay. And uh, we have all kinds of events there. Um, we have, uh, well, all sorts of events. It, it all ends with the prom. We have like a high school prom with live music and people get dressed up and um, yes. you know, they're finishing their runs and, yeah. and uh, having a good time. So it's the Born to Run Ultra Marathon, April 16th, 2022. Okay, cool. Um, don't mind. Yes. Yeah, man. Come on up. Check it out. Okay, well, thank you once again. And thank you. Live from Boundless family for joining me on another episode of the Live from Boundless show. Live a life beyond the boundary that you set on yourself. And remember to Luis, you know, he living the life, you know, his life, or doing what he want to do and loving what he's doing. Oh, I think I said, I said that right. But no, I think everybody got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, yeah, live a life with no boundaries. I might say that. <laughs> yeah, so again, thank you, family. Thank you, Mr. Louise. Until next time.